before going on to the discussion of the individual anticoagulants, what I will do first is, I will discuss the coagulation cascade. Because in order to understand the mechanism of action of the anticoagulants, we need to know first the coagulation cascade. Now, this particular coagulation cascade, like what we will be discussing here is, I will be telling you the coagulation pathway. Right, the coagulation pathway. So, within this particular coagulation pathway, what is being formed ultimately? A clot, a fibrin thread is being formed. In this end of the coagulation cascade, a fibrin thread is being formed. Now, we will make out what, are, what is the entire pathway, how the fibrin thread is being formed. So, within the coagulation pathway, remember, like we have intrinsic pathway. Right, we have what is called the intrinsic pathway and later what we have is the extrinsic pathway. Right, the intrinsic pathway and as well as the extrinsic pathway. Now, so you take the intrinsic pathway, the coagulation pathway in the intrinsic system, it will start from the factor 12 right it starts from the factor 12 now this particular factor 12 in the intrinsic pathway it is converted into the activated form of the factor 12 okay 12a stands for the activated form now this particular 12a that is the activated form it acts on the factor 11 to form the activated form of the factor 11a Right, the activated form of factor 11A. Now, this particular activated form of 11A, it acts on the factor 9. Right, it acts on factor 9, wherein you get what is called as the activated form of factor 9A. Right, it, you get what is called the activated form of factor 9A. Now, this particular 9A, the activated form of 9A, it acts on the factor 10 that is it acts on the coagulation factor 10. Now once it acts on fa coagulation factor 10 then you get what is called as the activated form of factor 10 right then you, you get what is called as activated form of 10. Now this formation of the activated form of factor 10 that is 10a does not only occur from the intrinsic pathway right the activation of factor 10 can also occur by your extrinsic pathway as well. So, in the extrinsic pathway, like what are the coagulation factors? It is factor 7 which is being converted into factor 7a. That is activated form of factor 7, right? That is the activated form of factor 7. Now, one point what you should understand here is, it is your 9A of the intrinsic pathway which will convert 10 to 10A and not only that, even your activated form of factor 7A, right, activated form of factor 7, even that also will convert 10 to 10A. Now, this particular 10A that is activated form of 10 plus activated form of factor 5 plus calcium right plus calcium and not only that even phospholipids right even phospholipids now this entire complex right this entire complex what it will do it will convert prothrombin to thrombin right this entire complex will convert prothrombin to thrombin okay so this particular pathway is called as the common pathway this particular pathway is called as the common pathway which one 
the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. Now, this particular thrombin, where it will act is, it will act on the fibrinogen, right? This thrombin, it acts on fibrinogen. This particular fibrinogen, it is converted to what is called as the fibrin threads, right? It is converted to what is called as the fibrin threads. Now, this particular fibrin thread within a clot, right? Within a clot, it is acted upon by factor 13A, right? 13A. What is your factor number 13? That is your fibrin stabilizing factor. That is your fi fibrin stabilizing factor. So, the factor 10A when it is acted upon the fibrin thread which is present in the clot, then you get what is called as a stable clot. Right, you get what is called as the stable clot. So, this is the sequel of the coagulation cascade. So, at the end of the coagulation cascade, what is being formed? The fibrin threads are being formed and a clot is being formed. So, for which you have the intrinsic pathway and as well as the extrinsic pathway. So, within the intrinsic pathway, like you have the conversion of first 12 to 12A, then that is acting on 9. 9 is being converted into activated form. Activated form of 9 is acting on 10. Then it is getting converted into activated form of 10A. That is 10A is nothing but activated form. Now, the conversion of 10 to 10A is not only by your intrinsic pathway, even by your extrinsic pathway. That is, wherein in the extrinsic pathway, you get activated form of factor 7. This activated form of factor 7, it, when it acts on 10, you get activated form of 10. That is 10A. Now, this 10A, along with activated form of factor 5, calcium and phospholipid, this entire complex, it acts on the prothrombin. This is called as a prothrombin converter. Right, this is called as the prothrombin converter, where you get what is called as the thrombin. Now, this particular thrombin it acts on fibrinogen, where you get a fibrin thread. Now, multiple fibrin threads they get accumulated in a clot. But how will the clot get stabilized? By the action of the fibrin stabilizing factor, which is factor 13A, and thereby you get a stable clot. Right, thereby you get a stable clot. So, this is your the coagulation cascade. Now, with this basic idea of the coagulation cascade, now let me discuss the individual anticoagulant where you can understand the mechanism of actions thoroughly.